Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.1 and Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper Module. Welcome to Tutorial 7, Guns and Rockets. Today we're going to learn how to employ the M61A1 Vulcan Cannon, uh, which is a, a six-barreled cannon uh, in 20 millimeter caliber. It's here on the wing route. If I actually pan the camera around a little bit, you can see three of the barrels there, just poking through that uh, that hole there. And um, not so visible in this particular aircraft, but in a lot of uh, the aircraft skins, you see quite a significant amount of uh, gun fouling down the side of the aircraft there from shooting. There's actually a little bit in front on this one. Uh, we're also going to learn how to use rockets. Uh, the F-16 can carry the LAU-3 rocket pod, uh, that's uh, a pod which contains 2.75 inch rockets and each one can contain 19 rockets. You see them here with their aerodynamic fairings intact on the front of the pods. Once you start firing these pop off, um, so they're, they're only present until you start using them. Um, there's a variety of different rocket types that we can carry in these pods, um, all of them same size, same number. Uh, we can carry M151 high explosive, uh, which are the standard ones, and in fact what I'm carrying here on this aircraft. We can carry M156 Willy Pete, used for marking targets. Um, yeah, I don't know... Hmm. I know there are certain uh, restrictions on what you can fire Willy Pete at. I think even there's some uh, international conventions banning its use, but in any case, uh, I, th I think it's usually used for marking targets, but of course it has a very, very nasty anti-personnel effect, uh, which would be, yeah, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Uh, we can also carry M5 rockets, uh, which are heat, high explosive, anti-tank. Uh, they have shaped charge warheads, which are quite good against armor. Uh, we can also carry the M61 practice rounds and the WTU-1-B practice rounds. And I don't actually know what the difference is between these two, but I'd assume you're going to, well, there's obviously going to be no explosive effect. They, they probably do some kind of marking, though they probably contain smoke or maybe a small amount of Willy Pete, I don't know. Uh, rocket pods can only be carried on the inner and middle pylons, as shown here. That's pylons 7, 6, 4 and 3. And uh, also when it comes to the gun, we do have a variety of different ammo types for the Vulcan cannon as well. It's a really common gun. It's used in a lot of different aircraft by a lot of different nations, and so over time many different uh, ammunition types have been come up with. Um, so it's possible to load it with high explosive incendiary with tracers, uh, just pure high explosive incendiary. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine both these two loadings are probably pretty good uh, air to air. Uh, you can also carry armor piercing ammo, which I guess would be pretty good against armored vehicles. I can't imagine you're going to be taking out tanks, but uh, well, it's 20 millimeter armor piercing. You're probably going to damage a tank. I don't know if you would necessarily destroy it. Um, it's also um, possible to carry the uh, training rounds. Uh, I, I assume they're not explosive and probably some sort of uh, reduced danger type of round. Uh, what I'm carrying today is something called SAP HEI PGU, which is the standard loadout, and it's a mix of armor piercing and high explosive incendiary. And then it's also possible to carry the training rounds with tracer. Uh, I'd imagine in most cases, if you're doing training, you would probably want the tracer, so you can see exactly what you're shooting at. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the aircraft started up now, and then I'll show you the setup uh, of the weapons. Uh, then we'll go to the range and give them a go. Uh, one quick thing to note is that you can change the gun loadout uh, if you speak to the ground crew. It's possible to do that from here. Ground crew, uh, rearming and refueling. And then they're going to show you the list of different things you can put on here. And your ammo type is selectable here. Uh, and all the ones that I described are present. Um, we actually don't have any on the aircraft right now, but I'll be sorting that shortly. Um, the other thing to note is that the rocket pods can fire singly or in ripple. Ripple means that with each press you basically empty a whole pod. Um, that is only set uh, by the ground crew, however, and so uh, you need to set that in the mission editor before you begin your mission. I've got these set for single, so we can do just single taps. Cool. Anyway, I'll get the aircraft set up and I'll see you all there. 
Okay, you join me back in the cockpit now. Aircraft is started up and ready to go, and I have actually put ammunition in the gun, which <laughs> would have been a little bit of an oversight. Let's take a little look at how these weapons are configured. There's not a lot to go through. Uh, they're employed in a CCIP mode, both of them, uh, and so pretty easy. Let's go air-to-ground master mode, and as always, right-hand... Uh, MFD is going to show us the stores management system. Uh, on here we've got the mode that we're currently in which is air to ground that allows us to employ uh, weapons that are hanging on pylons. If I click this I can switch to gun mode and then we're ready to employ the gun. Uh, let's go back to the AG mode first anyway. Um, there is only one employment mode for rockets and that's CCIP. Some aircraft have the capability to do a CCRP uh, style delivery, but that's uh, that's pretty unusual. So yeah, we've just got air to ground, CCIP. As always, we can bring up the inventory, uh, and here we can actually confirm that I have indeed loaded the gun. Standard loadout for the gun is 511 rounds. It just displays the the tens here, so it says 51 gun, uh, and it confirms the ammo type as well, which in this case is PGU 28, uh, and that uh, that conforms to the SAP HEI. Uh, you can see that I've got a fuel tank on the center line. On my inners, uh, you can see that I'm carrying... Th the code for this is L03, that stands for the Lau 03, that's the type of pod. And it then confirms that inside that pod are 19 M151 high explosive rockets. That's on the inners, that's repeated on the middles. Yeah, my outer pylons have got nothing, and once once again on the wingtips I've put a training loadout, so I've got an ACMI pod and a captive uh, AIM-9 Sidewinder. So let's come back out of inventory. We can see here that we have our rockets. Total of 76 M151 rockets, status ready. Uh, there are no other weapon types on the aircraft today. If I was carrying a mix of pods, pressing this would allow me to flip between... Uh, the, the types that I have loaded. Other option for the rockets is whether you want to fire from one pod at a time. So this will, uh, I don't actually exactly know the sequencing, I would assume it will be like left inner, right inner, left outer, right outer. Or we can go pair. Uh, and I think pair is going to kind of fire inner, outer, inner, outer. Uh, I'm going to leave it in pair. That's the, the mode that I'm going to go for today. Um, and if we take a little look at the symbology quickly that we have on the HUD, just so we're familiar with it, uh, for the most part, really the only thing we're going to get is confirmation of the mode, CCIP here, and we have a pipper, circle with a dot. Whenever we have a line on top of the pipper, that means that we are in range and we can let loose the, uh, the rockets. So that's it. That's really all you're getting. Very, very simple. Put the thing on the thing, wait for the thing, press the thing. Uh, if we take a little look back down at the stores management page, we'll double check what we get for the guns. So if I press AG and go into guns, guns have different modes that can be employed, uh, but when we're in air to ground, our only option is strafe. So we always want to see gun, strafe. There are a couple of different modes for air to air, I believe. Again, we've got inventory, we've already covered that. And then we have ready, 51, gun. And this is the confirmation of remaining rounds in the gun. The other thing that we can do is we can set the range uh, at which we want the um, the, the pipper to, to start counting down, basically. So standard is 12,000 feet. The gun is most effective between 2,500 and 7,000 feet. Uh, and actually, if we take a little look at the pipper, uh, it's not showing the pipper yet because we're not in the air. Um, normally, you'd have a pipper up on the screen. Uh, it's going to be quite a large circle, and it's going to count down uh, counterclockwise uh, and there's usually a line at the bottom and the line at the bottom when the pipper is set to 12,000 feet the line at the bottom of course corresponds to 6,000 feet so generally you're going to leave it on 12,000 wait for it to count down to the six and then you can feel free to start squeezing that trigger um, we could of course recalibrate that circle because if you're attacking armored targets especially tanks with the armor piercing rounds you're going to want to be considerably closer for it to be effective and you're going to be uh, wanting to approach them at quite a steep angle and from the rear. Um, so you could of course then change the uh, the start of your, your kind of countdown. You'd probably want to do something like 6,000 for that. Today we're going to leave it alone though. It's going to re be retained at 12,000 feet. And that is all of the setup. Yeah, I'll now get the aircraft in the air and on its way to the range and I'll see you guys there. We'll make some stuff go burt and foosh bang. Okay, here we are. We find ourselves inbound the range. 
Uh, the target is co-located with steer point number one, the diamond on the HUD here. I'm going to go air to ground mode and just uh, quickly checking down here we have ready the 76 M151s. Let's uh, pop them into pairs and see what that looks like. And I'm also going to make sure that my master arm is on, which is confirmed on the HUD with the caption arm. So let's get ourselves into a dive towards the target. Actually, no, we're a bit far out, 12 miles to go. Uh, let's stay up here at 10,000 for now. I thought I was a little bit closer. We'll get the speed up a little so we get there quicker. And keep in mind that with the rockets, you're using the weapons release or the pickle button. Uh, and of course, with the gun, you're using the gun trigger. So nine miles to go. Let's get in a bit closer and it will dive down towards this target. I'm going to wait until yeah the target's sort of dipping below the, the bottom of the HUD there, and then I'll begin my dive towards the target. You're usually wanting to employ rockets in something like a, a 20 degree or more dive. That's when they're going to be most effective. And there we go. We've got our pipper on the screen. I'm just going to... On the HUD, sorry. I'm going to put my pipper on the target for now. I'm going to deploy air brakes because I'm getting a little bit faster than I want to be. And yeah, that's us. We're at, at about 20 degrees nose down. You'll see that the pipper is kind of travelling further up the HUD as we accelerate and get closer to the ground. Waiting for the queue. Altitude. Altitude. We have the queue. And there you go firing these off in pairs. Every time I tap, more of them are there. That's the pull up. Throttle up, pull up, and away. And we got an excellent hit. Okay, so let's climb away there uh, and get ourselves back up to a decent altitude. And on the stores management system, I'm going to... Actually, I think I can do this from the HOTAS, yes. Actually, tapping nose wheel steering will also flip between AG and gun, but we can also do it by clicking on the first push button here. We're going to leave it at the 12,000 foot range, as I described before. You'll see we've got a line uh, and a really large pipper uh, with markings at the uh, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 3 o'clock positions. Uh, we could start... Uh, firing on the target at around about well, just left of the 6 o'clock position actually because that marks the 6,000 foot mark uh, but I'm, I'm going to wait until we're at 6,000 feet and that's slant range by the way uh, it uses the fire control radar to do all the ranging so of course you must ensure that your radar is on during these attacks okay I've got my pipper on the target and I'm going to start descending towards the target actually I'll bring the nose up and now bring it back down again. Okay, Pipper's on target. Gonna wait for the range to start counting down. We've got smoke marking exactly. Oh, there we go. So we're within the 12,000. Gonna let it get a bit closer. There we go. Squeeze the trigger. Burt. And pull up Q. And out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I rather enjoyed hearing that cannon roar, so I'm going to do one more pass. And you can see on the store's management page it says 28 gun, so we have something in the region of 280 rounds of gun remaining. So we can certainly afford another pass there, because who doesn't like hearing that? Who doesn't like hearing a bit of burt? Uh, now, of course, in the A-10 and some other aircraft, it is possible to employ guns uh, and rockets at the same time. Sadly, in the F-16, this is not possible. Uh, we only have the option of employing one or the other. However, with the nose wheel steering button, we could flip between them quite quickly. Uh, but uh, in any case, let's do another quick guns employment. Because that was a bit of fun. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed that. Okay, two miles. Pepper on target, or at least something approximating on target. Range counting down. It's a little bit of crosswind. 
Oh, yes. And we're out. That was a lot of fun. I don't know about you guys, but I very much enjoyed that. <laughs> Not quite the A10 Gau 8. You know, the, the Vulcan is uh, a little bit smaller caliber, 20mm instead of 30, but very much uh, a lot of fun to employ. So, that is how you employ guns and rockets, unguided rockets for that matter, in the F-16C Viper. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, liking and commenting. It's a really big help to me and the channel. And I'll see you all next time.